Sail on the flat. Sail on the flat. That's a pair of slammers, boys. Nice fish. Reeling in the Keys with host Captain George Clark Jr. Well, welcome back to Reeling in the Keys, guys. I'm Captain George Clark Jr. And look, we've taken you out sport fishing from backcountry to blue water with some of the best charter captains here in the Keys. But today we're going to do something completely different. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of fish. We're going out on the party boat here in Key Largo. Let's go meet Captain Chan, the captain of the Gulf Stream. Well, I'm on the flybridge of the Gulf Stream party boat with Captain Chan Warner. And Chan, thanks for having us today. Uh, sure, George. What, uh, what is the plan today? What, what is your routine? Uh, I think what we're going to do is run out to 130 feet to start with, uh, see if we can get some yellowtail and kingfish going, and then we'll uh, see how the current is and then, then make our second move after we fish that for a while. Chan, we've known each other a long time. I remember when I was a kid fishing with you on the Captain Jack. That goes back some years. That's, that was the other party boat here in Key Largo, and since then we've had a couple others. But now you uh, you have the Gulf Stream, very, very popular party boat in South Florida. We have a lot of locals that come out and fish with you as well as tourists. Well, we try, you know, and we, we try to give everybody a, a good day of fishing. Well, let me ask you something. Uh -huh. This business is really popular for the folks who come and visit to get them out on the water for a day, especially with families and stuff. And you guys are very productive. I mean, the areas that you fish and the techniques that you guys use, you know, just just working with the customers, how's uh, how's fishing been here lately? It's been, you know, I mean, you know, you're always going to have your slow times and you're going to have cyclic bites, you know, like some years the grouper will bite real good, sometimes the muttons will bite, sometimes you won't get a, you know, you'll have, everybody thinks that they're fished out, or, but I think every, everything like that is cyclic, but you have to keep moving around, looking for the fish, but the main thing is the, the techniques you use, and, uh, and the, the whole trick to the keys fishing is chum, you know, I mean, sure. you got to chum, if you chum, they'll come, if you don't, <laughs> they won't. <laughs> right. So the, the target species on the, on the party boats, on your boat, is yellowtail snapper. We have uh, a lot of customers who are just here just strictly for yellowtail, but we also have bottom fishing guys. Well, it's exciting. We okay. don't know what we're going to do. Well, let's go downstairs and, uh, and, and see Excellent. how these guys are doing. Sounds good. So when you're yellowtail fishing, you use a combination of sand and chum, the block chum, which is just ground up manhaden or, or a real oily fish. Mix that with sand and then we use oats. And the oats kind of hold the whole thing together. And you see here, he's packing the bait. You're putting that bait inside that ball and packing it real tight and then that goes overboard and you keep feeding the line out. You can't stop it or the ball will break apart. So you keep feeding it and that acts like a sinker almost. We got a fair amount of current so that'll take it down and the yellow tails will come up and break that ball apart and they'll find that little piece of bait in the middle of it with a small hook and you'll feel them just take off with your line when that happens you lock it up and and you see we have a rotation going here to keep the lines from getting tangled people wonder how you can fish on a party boat like this and not get tangled well you do get some tangles but for the most part everybody just goes in order here and it's just one at a time you get over into the corner and you wind up and try it again and that keeps the flow of chum going too and gets those fish closer to the boat. Up, Just starting to see a few right, few more bites now. They rotate across from the from the um, chum spot where they make the sand balls or scatter and then they go to the stern and when you get all the way down to the end we call it like uh, give up the dream. You If you don't get a hit you put reel in and do it again and it's continuously all day long and all the bottom fishermen fish on the side. Rotate. <laughs> Mr. Carter, you got one on? All right, we got one on in the corner here. 
Maybe a young, maybe a true runner. <laughs> Walk up. Walk up. Incoming. All right, nice one, Carter. Now, take your hand up. That was going to scatter that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cap. How's it going? Hello, Georgie. You got one on? Well, something was, getting you in the bottle. Yeah. It was way out there, and then it hit on the way in. And, went and right that happens a lot, right? Groupers will eat your, your they, yellowtail as you're bringing will. it up and go right down into the rock. So. Let's see if we can just take it real nice and slow. See? Oh, yeah, he's there. Oh, it came off. <laughs> well. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not real. It's the mark of a fabulous yeah. mate. Yeah. All right, way to save the fish, Fluff. Yay! <laughs> Come on, fishy. Show everybody what this looks like. This is a yellowtail snapper. Beautiful. Best eating fish in these waters, awesome. in my opinion. Look how pink that is. It's such a beautiful fish. <laughs> the yellowtail is a school fish. They're going to swim into that cloud. They're going to eat every bit of that sand chum and oats. And then if your bait's off to the side or behind or below it, then you're not going to get a bite. But if you're right in that cloud, then that's when, they, when you're going to bite. We're fighting the current and the fish. So on the party boat, we got a lot of people, or 15, 15, 18 people most days that all come out here and fish. You're probably wondering, well, we're throwing all the same fish in the same box, how do we sort them out? Everybody gets their own mark. It can be one notch on the top of the head, maybe the bottom tail cut off, but everybody gets their own mark. And that way, at the end of the day, when we pull fish out of the fish box, everybody, we go through them and you look for the marks and the marks will be there and, and everybody gets their fish. So it's a, kind of a cool thing. I don't have one. Okay, you're going to be on uh, two throw. Double on the throw. Thank you. And then the next person to catch a fish, I yell out, do anybody have one on the throw? And I keep yelling it out. Nobody said that I pass, I go down. One throw, two throw, three throw. They work head, tails, et cetera, et cetera. Shave nose. Shave nose. <laughs> Everybody again, fought over shave nose. You still do. Still do. They still fight over that mark. You know why? Nobody can't duplicate it. That's right. One on the head, you can kind of. Uh, you can't by the top tail, bottom tail. If you got one, if you got one on the head, another guy got two in the head. If you ain't watching, he can always grab. That didn't change. So shave nose. I had that helmet help in the dry Nobody touch too. Nobody steals other people's fish on the man, boat. boat. No. <laughs> and the dry, and the dry touch no. because I had to have a lot. No, but they forget their marks a lot of times. Right. Put you. Yeah. Put you. <laughs> Okay, one more. Una más. Okay. Okay, but not you. A wahoo. Nice wahoo.
go. Right now we're gonna, see I'm throwing the hook in about 160 feet of water and we're gonna set back and up on the bank in 140 yeah. feet and see if we can find some muttons. Now we just caught a wahoo right as yeah. we crossed over the bank, so uh, if we can get some live bait out on the surface, maybe we can get another one out here. She believed the proper way to reel in a reel, if you're right-handed, is to reel, reel with your right hand. But people that know what they're doing, they use their power arm to lift with the rod, and the other hand to reel with the reel. What hand do you use to reel in a uh, grouper? Well, you use your right hand, but that wants your power. You want your power arm because you're doing the reeling. You know? Yeah, I know. Don't be trying to uh, <laughs> confuse me. <laughs> Boy. Three fish hey, on the same time. Hey, Rick. What is it? File fish. Look. Yeah. File. No. Bank stealers. Big wine. I'll quit now, Lamont. It looks like, you know, we just have tons of fish flying in the boat. But in reality, when you have this many people on the boat, you know, you want to try to satisfy everybody. And we do have some bottom fishermen here, so I'm going to go, uh, go out there and look around a little bit and see if we can get on some bottom fish. So. We've had a couple hours, uh, pretty good yellowtail bite going on. But it, as you've noticed, the, the guys on the bottom have not had much of a chance to catch anything. So we're going to move out a little deeper, uh, about 140, 150 feet. See if we can find some nice mutton snappers for the bottom guys. I got to work with two people that were uh, for the recreational scuba community. I got to work with a, a guy named Crawdaddy. His real name was Bill Crawford. <laughs> right, right. And uh, he was lived in Jacksonville, and he would come down, and uh, he worked for Slate also, and he would come down and stay, you know, most of the year. And uh, Crawdaddy and I got to t talking, and, and and he was. Before there was Patty, before there was now a Crawdaddy used to uh, bring people down here to dive with us back in the early 60s. There was a guy down here named Bill Crawford also, who was ex-Navy diver. And that's Captain Bill. And uh, Crawdaddy would bring groups down to him. Well, I, I got to work He's with... He's still around. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I hope he is. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I know, I see him. But uh, I, I worked with him at Slates, and then I worked with him at Sharky's, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be able to, uh, to work with Two, two of the guys who were instrumental in the beginning of the recreational scuba diving in the whole country. I mean, that, that was pretty interesting that to be able really to do that. That is really interesting, really. Yeah. Rich has got a porgy. Swing it in. Nice porgy shot. That's a good catch. That's a keeper. That's, I, I believe that one is Lee. Um, Pinch his tail. Yeah. Pinch his tail. Yeah. Bottom tail is a mark. I don't know what it is. It's super deep here. You having fun at the party? Yeah, I'm on the party boat having fun. Couldn't let everybody catch them all. I had to try to catch one. <laughs> wow, it's a long way down there. I gotta start working out, man. I'm out of breath here. Oh, look at this button coming up. Whoa, nice. It's not the big one. That's pretty. That's not bad. That's good. That's even. That's good. 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 That's I try to get out on the weekends. That's usually when I have off. So sometimes I'll go out on a Friday evening uh, and then Saturday or Sunday. But in that, I have to have one day for the wifey. <laughs> so I'll get a day and a half in almost every week. Uh, Stuttering Jack back 10, 12 years ago uh, came down one, one week from Miami and he said, Kid, he says, I won't be fishing with you much longer. And I said, what's the matter, Jack? He said, well, they opened me up and he showed me this big scar in his stomach and they opened him up and he had pancreatic cancer and they said they were, uh, he had about maybe two months to live. And so I thought, geez, Jack, I said, what are you gonna do? He says, I'm gonna fish with you until I die. So he drove down every day until he couldn't drive anymore. Then he had his friend drive him down. 
And so then one day his uh, wife called me and said, well, Jack won't be making it anymore. Uh, he passed away. And I thought, oh, I'm really sad about that. She said, well, he wanted to know, um, and I want to know how much you would charge to uh, bury his, his ashes out of the sea. And I said, nothing. I said, in fact, if you uh, give me a little time, let me have a date, I'll get all of his buddies on the board and we'll all send Jack off together. And so back at that time, I had these little cards I gave out. You bought 10 trips, you get one free. The family and all Jack's friends were already on the boat, so I'm helping her up on the boat to, to come up on the boat. And she hands me his card, like that was his 11th trip, that was his free trip, it was his burial. So. Keep that, G. Baby. <laughs> I started running these party boats and I started meeting these older guys. I mean, older like, uh, you know, in their 70s and 80s. Right. You know, yeah. all these guys, you know, that, that were been down here fishing for 40 years or better, and they'd fall fish together. They started off as snowbirds and then some of them moved down here, but they'd all fish together. And, they, and every year they would teach me something, they'd show me a little spot to go to. Then I was willed uh, their book when the last <laughs> one died, yeah. Well, how, how many boats have you been on, Chan, including your Navy experience? Probably a couple of dozen, I would say, if you add all the ones in the Keys. You know, I worked for uh, three different companies at the same time in the Key, back in the 90s. Uh, I worked for Captain Slate at the Atlantic St Atlantis Dive Center and uh, Sharky's Dive Center, and then I ran the Atlantic Star boat. And I was working, that, those days I was working seven days a week and four nights a week. But uh, now it's only six days and three nights. <laughs> You've over the years done so much for so many different organizations, Chan. You're such a giving person. And you know, with the veterans, you, you've always welcomed them to come down. You've taken them over the years, so many of them, given them a chance to come out here and experience this. And also, you know, the staff at the Children's Hospital up in Miami, you've bring, brought them out on the boat and, and showed them a good time. That's a special thing to you, isn't it? The biggest part of life is giving, you know. You gotta be able to give before you can even begin to think about taking, you know. But, um, and I've, Lord, I've, in my lifetime, I've had a lot of people help me out over the years. So it's, you know, it's just payback, basically, you know. Some people call it karma or whatever, you know. I know when I came home from Vietnam, what we went through, and it was not, not a pretty thing, you know. And uh, these guys coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq, I mean, you know, I mean, they need every bit of help that we can give them, you know. So I'm 100% for for that. Just pop one of them out. And... Well, it's mad, mad chaos in the back of the boat. So I moved up the side of the boat. And lo and behold, I got a bite up here. There's fish actually everywhere around the boat right now. Oh, I see it. It's like a yellowtail snapper. Oh, Looks like I'm not eating chicken tonight. Eat some yellowtail. It's like riding a bike. It surely is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, hey, I do want to thank you for having us on the boat today on the Gulf Stream here. Folks, the, the Gulf Stream's located in Key Largo, right at uh, Key Largo Fisheries, and it's the full day party boat. You can come out here and do this with Captain Chan just about seven days a week. 
and on six, weekends. Six days, we're off Mondays. They're off Monday, so <laughs> don't plan on that. But okay. but thanks a lot. It's good to oh, see a sure, bunch bro. of familiar faces, and uh, it's good to know that uh, the yellowtail fishing is still as good as it's always been. Oh uh, yes, yeah. still thriving. See that? Just that. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and, and yeah. catch us next week on more reeling in the keys. There's a place out on the ocean, you ain't on a map anywhere. The captain's looking at the water, he knows exactly where to steer. No internet or Wi Fi tower, all that stress is gone. The line's just went in the water, and somebody yells, Fish on! And it's just another day. Reeling in the keys We got that fishing feeling There's no place we'd rather be We're a million miles from nowhere But we ain't lost at sea Just loving life, living the dream Reeling in the keys